Uh, as Bengalele Babugele Makaya, um, this is still Mr. Mgadi. Uh, today we will be on physical sciences. We are doing the law of conservation of linear momentum. So, uh, let us first um, state the law of conservation of linear momentum um, as our starting point. Uh, the law of conservation of linear momentum states that states that the total linear momentum in an isolated system remains constant so there there is a term that i want us to look at here the term is isolated what do we mean when we are saying that a a something is isolated or what what, what are we talking about if we are talking about an isolated system so here we mean that the external the external forces the external forces are not considered the external forces are not considered what are, we, what are we talking about when we are talking about external forces the external forces are air resistance these are examples air resistance frictional force and and the applied forces and the applied forces so we are not actually saying that these forces do not have an effect on our system in our system we are saying that these forces do not have an impact we cannot separate a moving object that is on the ground from the ground that means our frictional force will be there but the effect of the frictional force will not be considered we are looking at the part of the problem where we ignore the the frictional force same it is the same with the air resistance we cannot remove the air if the car is moving on the road so the air will always be there air resistance will always be there but we are neglecting the fact that the air resistance is there so with the with the law of conservation of momentum we have five problem types and you must know all them by heart so we will be looking at problem type number one where we have two objects that collide and continue to move uh, as separate objects after the collision so here we will be talking about collisions and explosions when we are talking of collisions we can have a car let's let, let us say we have a car a car a that is moving on the road a, and car b They are moving on the same plane. So car A is moving to the right and car B is moving to the left. Uh, this is before our collision. Before collision. Then these cars then collide. Car A and car B. They then collide. So, after collision, this is after collision. So we said the law of conservation of momentum states that in an isolated system, 
the, the, the total linear momentum remains constant. What does that mean? It means that the momentum, the total momentum before collision, we can look at the momentum of car A and the, uh, and the momentum of car B all together. That means we will be summing them up. It will be the same as the momentum of car A and car B after collision when we sum them. So we will, we will be looking at problems using this formula. So we have the sum of the initial momentum and the sum of the, of the final momentum. We, we, we know that from our first session when we, are talking about moment, when we were talking about momentum that momentum is the product of the mass and the velocity. The mass is given by a, a small letter m and our velocity is given by a small letter v. And we did mention that our momentum is a vector quantity because it, pro because it is the product of the mass, which is a scalar quantity, and uh, the velocity, which is a vector quantity, which makes our momentum eh, a vector quantity. A vector quantity. Meaning that if you are talking about momentum, another thing we will be considering is direction of motion. So here, when we expand our formula, it is said that uh, the, the total linear momentum before collision is the product of the mass and the velocity of the first object and the mass plus the mass and the velocity of our second object. As I said, that we will be summing we will be working out the sum of the, of the momentum before collision and we will be looking at the sum of the momentum after collision. So we expect this to be, we expect this to be equal. So the first problem uh, says that we have two objects that collide and continue to move as separate objects after collision. So this is the first type of collision. The second type of collision uh, is where we have two objects which collide and unite, meaning that they will collide and move as a unity. We will have two objects, uh, that means we will add the masses, we will have two objects, these objects will be moving together, which means they will have the same velocity. So we will sum the masses and multiply it by and multiply by the same final velocity. The third type of the, of the problem we will be looking at is where we have two moving objects that are initially joined. That means they will be a, a unit a before collision. And then after collision, they separate. We will look at problems of that nature. Problem type number four, we will be looking at two stationary objects that are initially joined then separate that can be an explosion as, as it is said that an example is an explosion uh, problem type number five the last problem we will be looking at an object that falls vertically onto another object that is moving horizontally below it so let us go and look at our first type of a of a problem so here we have problem type number one, where we will be looking at two objects that collide and continue to move as separate objects after our collision. So we are given a problem that in a railway shunting yard, a locomotive, which is a train engine of mass 4,000 kilogram, travels due east at a velocity of 1.5 meters per second it is said that the train driver tries to link it, the locomotive tries to link it to a stationary wagon of mass 3000 kg by letting them collide. Instead of the wagon, instead the wagon moves to east with a velocity of 2.8 meters per second. And then it is said that we should calculate the magnitude and direction of the velocity of the locomotive immediately after collision so the problem is already thrown down for you even the direction is there for you so as i said that our momentum is a vector quantity we must consider direction so we are given 
we are given that the, 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 the locomotive is moving to east. So let us choose our direction. Let us choose our east to be positive. So east is positive. Please make sure that when you are indicating your direction, the person who will be marking sees clearly where you have indicated your choice of direction. If you choose east to be positive, make sure that you, your, the marker sees that if you have a highlighter, please use it as you indicate your direction, as this is very important uh, when a person is marking. So as we chose east to be positive, our west will be negative or everything that opposes east is negative. So the opposite of east is west, so our west will be negative. If it is said that our object is moving south and you choose south to be positive, that means your north will be negative. If you choose your right to be positive, your left will be, will be negative. So we have a problem we are given our before collision and we are given after our after collision. So we are looking for the final value city for the locomotive. So we were given a formula that the sum of the momentum initially is equal to the sum of the momentum finally. So as we expand that, it was further said that the mass of the first object, our first object is the locomotive, so let us use an L for the locomotive multiplied by the velocity initial of the, of the locomotive plus. Uh, initially we do have a mass again of the work on, so we will use W for the work on multiplied by the velocity initial of the work on is equal to the, the mass of the locomotive multiplied by the velocity of the locomotive final a uh, that is the final velocity for the locomotive plus the mass of the uh, work on multiplied by the velocity final of the of the work on so we chose our east to be positive, so we will substitute our mass, which will be 4,000 multiplied by our locomotive is initially moving at 1.5 meters per second, so it is positive because it is moving east 1.5 meters per second. Plus our mass for the work on is 3,000 kilograms multiplied by. The initial velocity, as it was said, that the, the, the work on was stationary. Stationary means that something is not moving. Something that is not moving possesses a velocity of zero. So we have zero meters per second for, the, uh, for our work on. Is equal to the mass for the locomotive is again 4,000 uh, multiplied by the the final velocity for our locomotive is the velocity we are looking for plus the mass is 3000 for the work on and then the final velocity for the locomotive we have for the work on I mean we have 2 positive 2.8 as this is said that the work on continues to move to east. So let us take out our calculators and multiply and find our final answer. So we have 4,000 multiplied by positive 1.5. That will be 6,000 uh, plus this is a zero. So we will have uh, an equal sign. This is 4,000 VF for the locomotive uh, plus 3,000 multiplied by 2.8 that will be 8400 so we will eliminate 8400 this side and add 8000 and subtract I'm sorry subtract 7400 subtract this side 8400 
and subtract 8,400 this side. So, negative 8,400 plus a 6,000. We have 2,400, negative 2,400 this side. And then we have 4,000 V, F, L this side. So we are going to divide by our 4,000 both sides. Uh, we will have VFL being equal to, so we have negative 2,400 divided by uh, 4,000. We will have a negative 0 0.6. Therefore, VFL is equal to 0 0.6 meters per second. As our answer is negative. We did mention that if we choose is to be positive and here we get a negative answer that means the the the, the, fine, the, the locomotive finally moves to to west it moves to the opposite direction so it moves west so that was problem type number one we saw that the objects initially were, were, were moving separately uh, and then after collision they were moving separately again. So the object moves in the opposite direction. So we are done with problem type number one. So we are moving on to problem type number two where two objects collide and then move as a unit. So we are given here that a, a boy of mass 40 kilograms uh, runs at 5 meters per second east and jumps onto a skateboard of mass 2 kilograms uh, moving at 3 meters per second east. So the boy and the skateboard are moving east. So we have a boy. I'm quite an artist so I will draw this for you. We have a boy uh, and then the boy is moving east with a velocity of 5 meters per, per second. And then there is a skateboard again. The skateboard is already moving east again and it is moving at a velocity of 3 meters per, per second. So it is said that after collision, we should, or it is said that we should calculate the speed at which the boy and the skateboard move together. That means that the boy will jump onto the skateboard and then they will move together with the same final velocity that we do not know, or the same speed. So please guys, do note that, please read the questions carefully and make sure that you understand your question. Like here it is said that we should calculate the speed, not the velocity. So what we know about the speed is that it is a scalar quantity. That means it does not consider direction. It only consider, considers the magnitude. So in our final answer, we should not indicate the the direction in which the boy and the skateboard are moving to. So here we will write our formula which is the sum of the initial momentum uh, is equal to the sum of the final momentum. So here we know that the boy, the mass of the boy times the velocity of the boy, initial velocity of the boy plus the mass of the skateboard i will use an s for the skateboard multiplied by the velocity initial of the skateboard is equal to with the final momentum while we must notice is that the the boy has his mass and a velocity plus the skateboard has a mass and then a, a velocity so what we must note here is that the mass, the, the, the boy and the, and the skateboard share 
a, a similar velocity or the same velocity. So we must factor out our velocity and have m b plus m s. We factor out our velocity because they share the same final velocity. So they will have the same v f. So then we substitute in our formula. So initially the boy has a mass of 40 and then the boy is running uh, at 5 meters per second plus the mass of the skateboard is 2 kilograms 2 kilograms uh, and the velocity of the Two kilograms the velocity of the skateboard initially is three meters per second so finally we will add their masses four plus two uh, and then we find our their final velocity so 40 times 5 that is a 200 200 plus 2 times 3 that's a 6 is equals to 40 plus 2 that is 42 vf we divide by 42. This is 206. Oh, let's just not divide here. Let's not divide. Let's just add. This is 206 is equal to 42 VF. So, let's just divide by 42. Divide by 42. So, our final speed is going to be 206 divided by 42 so we will have 4.90 meters per per second so we will not indicate the direction as we are talking of the speed so that was problem type number two let us move on to problem type number number three uh, problem type number three, we are given there are two moving objects uh, that are initially joined, then separate. And then we are given a scenario there and a beautiful drawn diagram on the side. Uh, our statement says that Hendrik is an amateur rocket builder. He launches a two-stage rocket as shown in the diagram. And then it is said that Section A, which is stage one. If we go to our diagram, we will see that we have a section A here and a section B. So our section A is stage one and, it's, and it is said that it contains the rocket engine, section A. Uh, contains the rocket, the rocket engine and fuel. Then section B, which is stage two, which is stage two, has a mass of two kilograms. And then number one, number one says that we should, or it says that Hendrik says that Newton's third law of motion is used to explain why the rocket moves upwards during the flight. Identify one action reaction pair of forces involved with the rocket's motion. Remember that Newton's third law states that when body A exerts a force on body B, body B exerts the force that is equal in magnitude on body A, but it is opposite in direction. So it is said that we should identify the action reaction pair of forces so with section a and section b oh there are gases that are expelled here we have gases that are expelled or pushed out pushed out by the by the engine so we can say that a the action reaction pair is of the the force 
एक्जेट है पाई द पाई द रॉकेट्स ऑन द द रॉकेट्स इंजन ऑन द पुश्ड आउट और एक्सपेल्ड कैसेस पुश्ड आउट कैसेस और एक्सपेल्ड कैसेस ए द फोर्स दैट्स द फोर्स एक्सेट्ड बाय द रॉकेट्स ऑन द पुश्ड आउट कैसेस एंड the force exerted by the pushed out gases on on the on the rocket so we do remember examples where Uh, where it was said that if you push the wall with a force of 5 newtons the wall will push back at you with a force of 5 newtons but the thing that will be different is that the wall will be pushing in the opposite direction as you push towards the wall the wall will push towards you the force will be equal in magnitude so that is what is happening here the the action reaction pair that i've identified is of the gases the 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 rocket exerts a force on the pushed out gases and the pushed out gases exert the same force but opposite in direction on the rocket so with number 2 we are given a statement first that at a certain height when the rocket has a velocity of 5 meters per second upwards the last fuel is used up uh, and section a has a mass of 3 kg As a mass of 3 kg, there is a there is a full stop here. To get section B even higher, a small explosion separates section B from section A at this point and increases the upwards velocity of section B to 8 meters per second. So we get a notion that this rocket uh, explodes and then. the last fuel is used up and section b is pushed up much higher and it reaches a velocity of 8 meters per second the section the, the, the section b has a mass of 2 kilograms and section a has a, a a mass of 3 kilograms and then it is said that we should state first states the law of conservation of linear momentum we did say the law of conservation the law of conservation of linear momentum states states that states that in an isolated in an isolated system the total linear momentum remains constant or is conserved so now we will move on to number 3 it is said that you should calculate the velocity of section a after the explosion that means we will be calculating the final velocity for this portion so let us erase this so that we will have enough space for our calculation okay so let us write down our formula which is the sum of the initial momentum is equals to the sum of the final momentum so what we get here is that the 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 rocket initially has a or has a mass that can be written as the mass of a plus the mass of b the mass of b it is initially 
moving as a unit. Section A and section P are initially moving as a unit. So they are sharing the same velocity, the same initial velocity. Then after collision, they then separate to different velocities. Final velocity of A plus the final velocity of B. The final velocity of B. So here we, we get the notion here that our section A has a mass of 3 kilograms plus our section B has a mass of 2 kilograms. And then the initially our rocket is moving at a velocity of 5 meters per, per second. The velocity of 5 meters per second. We forgot to choose our direction. So let us choose our direction upwards is positive. And I'm clearly indicating that A is equal to our mass for A is 3. Then the final velocity for A is what we are looking for. Plus the mass of A is the mass of I mean the mass of P, the mass of P is 2 kilograms and the velocity for our P is given to be 8 meters per second. It is positive it is, as it is moving continually upwards. So here we have a 5 multiplied by 5 equals to 3 VFA plus a 16. 2 times 8, that's a 16. So we have a 25 here, we have a 25 and then we will eliminate a 16 this side and we will eliminate a, a 16 this side. So we have a 25 minus 16 is equal to 3 VFA. So 25 minus 16 that must be a 9. So it's 9 equals to 3 VFA. Then we will divide on both sides by a 3. Then our VFA is equal to 9 divided by 3. That is a 3 meters per, per second. So 3 meters per second. And as we are getting a positive answer here, we do or we can come to a conclusion that our section A is still moving upwards it's still moving upwards so that was problem type number that was problem type number three so let us quickly move on to our problem type number four problem type number four uh, states that two stationary objects are initially joined they then separate here we had two moving objects that are initially joined they were then separated so what is the difference here is that these two these two objects were moving here but here it is given that they are stationary these two objects are stationary so let us be careful of that fact so in this problem it is given that when two objects are forced apart, are forced apart uh, by an explosion or as a result of a compressed spiral spring between them, they move in opposite directions. After the explosion, e.g. when a gun fires a bullet, the bullet moves forward and the gun moves backwards. We have seen that in movies that when a person is shooting out a bullet, the bullet as it moves out, the gun tends to have that effect of moving backwards. So here we will be looking at a problem where it is said that a gun of one kilogram is attached to a trolley uh, of mass four kilograms and is loaded with a bullet of mass 2 grams. 
Uh, the system is at rest on a frictionless horizontal surface. The gun is fired by a remote control and the bullet has a muzzle velocity of 350 meters per second. And that is a very high velocity. That is why you end up dying when dead get in con get into contact with your bullet. That is a very high velocity. So it is then said that you should calculate the velocity of the trolley and the gun after the bullet has been has been fired. So let me draw this down for you. Uh, Okay, let me draw this down for you. Sorry about that. Uh, here we have a trolley. We have a trolley. And it is said that this trolley is attached to, the gun is attached to the trolley. So, there is a gun here. So, let us call this a trolley gun system. So, this is a trolley gun system and then we have a bullet that is inside the gun as we are talking initially then the bullet after an explosion tends to be fired out so the bullet is then fired out and it is moving very fast in its, direct, in its direction of motion. So this is a bullet, our bullet. Our bullet. So we have a trolley gun system and a bullet. So let us, let us, let us, let us go to coming up with a, with a solution. We should calculate the velocity of the trolley gun system after the bullet has been has been fired so let's just write down our formula uh, we have the sum of the initial momentum is equals to the sum of the of the final momentum so then we are given that there is a mass of the trolley gun system times the velocity initial of the trolley gun system plus the mass of the bullets I will use B for the bullet multiplied by the initial velocity of the of the bullet is equals to the mass of the trolley gun system times the velocity final of the trolley gun system plus the mass of the bullet multiplied by the velocity final of the bullet so let's just substitute let's now substitute a okay we have uh, the velocity okay let's just substitute the the trolley is four kilograms and the gun is one kilogram so we will have a five kilograms for the trolley gun system it has the velocity of zero plus initially oh we are, we are we are not given the direction so as this is a horizontal surface let us assume that is the the bullet is fired to the right so we will choose our right to be positive. Then our mass of the bullet is 2 grams. That is not a, a, usable, a usable mass in these problems. So we will have to convert it to grams into kilograms. So 1 kilogram is equal to uh, 1000 grams. So we will divide... 2 grams by a thousand 
So this is a 0 0.002 kilograms uh, multiplied by the initial velocity of zero. Then we have a mass of the trolley gun system after collision and we are looking for a velocity final for the trolley gun system. So we will then add the mass of the bullet which is 0 0.002 and then we will multiply it by um, 300, 350 meters per second which is positive which is positive so we will have a zero to side equals to 0 0.0 um, 0 0.002 multiplied by 350 is 07 we will have 5 V F T G a uh, plus 0 0.7 so uh, we will then uh, eliminate 0 0.7 decide and subtract 0 0.7 decide so this is a zero this is a zero blah, blah, blah. so we will have a, a negative 0 0.7 decide is equal to 5 VFT G. We will then divide by 5 on both sides. Uh, 0 0.7 divided by 5. We will have a negative 0 0.14 is equal to VFT G. Therefore, VFT G is equal to 0 0.14 meters per per second uh, where is it moving in which direction is it moving we said that to the right was positive so to the left or in the opposite direction of motion so opposite direction in the opposite direction to that of motion opposite direction to that of motion so we will move on to our last last problem which is very interesting our last problem here we are given that a trolley of mass 3 kilograms moves at 4 meters per second west along a frictionless horizontal path it is given that a brick of mass one kilograms drops drops uh, vertically onto it the brick lands on the trolley at a velocity of 0 0.05 meters per second then calculate the velocity of the brick and the trolley system after the collision and then you are giving a hint here Beautiful hint that if an object falls vertically, its horizontal velocity will be zero, meaning that its initial momentum will be zero. So here, let us, this is the brick. This is the brick, this is the trolley. So I will use B for the brick and C for the trolley. Here we have the sum of the initial momentum is equal to the sum of the of the final momentum. So initially we have the mass of the uh, brick times the initial velocity of the brick plus the mass of the uh, trolley multiplied by the initial velocity of the trolley is equal to the mass of the A, the brick plus the mass of the trolley they are now moving as a, a single system so we have the final velocity of the brick trolley system so here we have a trolley and well, let us start with the brick um, it was given that its value its velocity is zero so we will have a 
the mass for the brick is 1 kilograms multiplied by an initial velocity of 0 plus the mass of the trolley is 3 kilograms and then it is moving at uh, 4 meters per second so west east let's just choose east to be negative let's just choose east to be negative so we will have a negative a negative 4 here let me erase that and rewrite it so we will have a negative 4 as it is moving east so this is moving west i'm sorry about that so we will then have a mass of the brick which is 1 plus the mass of the trolley which is 3 multiplied by the final velocity of the brick trolley system so this is a 0 we will have a negative 12 equals to a 4 v f b t so here we will divide by a 4 divide by a 4 12 divided by a 4 that is a negative 3 equals to v f b t so therefore our final value ct for the brake trolley system is going to be equal to 3 meters per second uh, west as our answer was negative so it will be moving to the west so hey yeah uh, that was the that was our last that was our last problem uh, so babu gele makaya is fundo se to sanam change se conduce law of conservation of linear momentum sipela lapo ubenesikati esimnandi